The target vocabulary for this section are the verbs strive, opt, perish, admonish, and yearn. These are the next five verbs we're going to master. Let's look at verb number one. Word number one is strive, which means to try very hard to achieve something. For example, every player on the team is striving for success. Strive means to work hard in order to achieve something. So in this example, every player on the team is working very hard to achieve success. They're striving for success. Another example would be if I'm writing a book and I want to complete it before the end of the month so that I can publish it next month. I can say, I'm striving to complete the book before the end of the month. I'm working very hard in order to achieve this. So striving has a feeling of working hard and putting in lots of effort to achieve something. Let's look at the second word now. Word number two is opt which means to make a choice from a range of possibilities. For example, there were so many cars to choose from, but we opted for a beautiful red BMW. To opt basically means to choose from a range of possibilities. So in this example, the person had a lot of choice. He had many, many cars to choose from. But he opted for a red BMW. He chose this car from the range of possibilities. Imagine if I'm going on a trip to Europe. I can choose any country in Europe that I like. But I choose Germany. I can say, I could visit any country in Europe but we opted for Germany. So this is my choice from the range of countries. Now let's look at the next word. Word number three is perish, which means to die or to stop existing. For example, 90% of the farmer's crops perished during the unexpected cold weather. So these poor farmers had a very difficult time because 90% of the crops perished. 90% of the crops died. So we use perish to say that a large number of things die in some kind of accident or catastrophic event. We can also use it to talk about people dying on a large scale. So for example, the Titanic disaster was a very sad event where many, many people died. So we could say more than 1500 people perished in the sinking of the Titanic. So more than 1500 people died. In this case, we can use the verb to perish. Now let's look at word number four. Word number four is admonish, which means to tell someone they have done something wrong. For example, my professor admonished me for talking during his lectures. I kept talking during my lectures, so my professor had to tell me, look, stop doing it. This is not good. He admonished me. So to admonish is to tell someone they've done something wrong. 
You're not shouting at them or being overly critical. You're just giving them a few words and saying, look, you've done something wrong. Please correct this bad behavior. So admonish is a lighter form of telling off or scolding someone. When you watch soccer, the referee often approaches the players when they've made a foul and admonishes them. He has a few words with them and tells them, calm down, don't foul anymore, otherwise I'll have to give you a card. So the referee admonishes the players. He gives them a few words to tell them they've done something wrong. Now let's look at the last word. Word number five is yearn, which means to want something very much, often something you can't get. For example, he yearned to be a singer, but knew that his chance was gone. This word evokes a feeling of sadness and pity for the person that is yearning. When we yearn for something, we want something that is difficult to get or impossible to get. So it's a kind of sad feeling of wanting and longing for something. So in this example, the person desperately wanted to become a singer, but he knew that his chance was gone. Maybe he was too old or maybe he had to pursue another career. So he knew his chance was gone, even though he yearned to be a singer. Another example of yearn would be when someone has split up with his or her partner. Imagine it's a man has split up with his girlfriend. After a year, the man might still yearn to be with her. He might still be desperately wanting to be with her. But maybe she's moved on. Maybe she has another boyfriend, maybe she's got married, but he still wants to be with her. So we can say he yearns to be with her. This means he desperately wants to be with her, but he can't. It's impossible now. His chance is gone. So this is the meaning of yearn. Now it's time to move on to the pronunciation training. Don't forget to download the MP3s as always. Listen as much as you can. Train your brain to master these words. I'll see you in the next lecture.